In this video, we're going to look at several examples where we are going to find vertical asymptotes, and we are going to also evaluate some limits. All right, so let's jump into our first example. f of x equals 1 over x plus 1. Uh, does this have any vertical asymptotes? So what would cause a vertical asymptote? In our last video, uh, at the end of our, towards the end of the last video, we observed, we talked about how if we were to plug in a value of x, a value of x that would make our denominator zero, but the numerator not zero, any of those values of x are going to be vertical asymptotes. So is there something that we would plug into the denominator that would make it zero while the top is not zero? So x equals negative one. That would make that denominator zero, but the numerator would not be zero. Great. Uh, so that is a vertical asymptote. Now let's step back over here and let's see if we can evaluate this limit. And so we have the limit as x approaches negative one, but we are coming at negative one from the right. Now this is a vertical asymptote at negative one, so my sense is this is probably approaching positive infinity or negative infinity. Now, there can be weird things that happen where on one side it's approaching a number, but the other side it's approaching positive or negative infinity, um, even though you have a vertical asymptote there. So that's okay, but that's this is at least my initial intuition. All right, so if we have a value a little bit larger than negative 1, so negative 0.9, if I was to plug in negative 0.9 here, I would have uh, negative 0.9 plus 1, is positive 0 0.1. If we take 1 divided by 0 0.1, 1 divided by a really small negative number, uh, sorry, a really small positive number, it's going to blow up. It's going to get really large. It's heading towards infinity. So that limit is infinity. Great. So again, that thought process there, even though I didn't show any work, the thought process is when we plug in a value that's a little bit to the right of negative 1, then this denominator is going to be really close to 0, but it's going to be really close to 0 and positive. So it's a really small positive number. If you were to take a positive number divided by something that's really small but positive, it's going to just blow up. All right, so let's look at the second example. So in the second example, we have x squared plus 2 over x plus 4. So is there anything that would give us a 0 in a denominator? And absolutely, uh, we are going to have a vertical asymptote when x is equal to negative 4. It would give us 0 in that denominator, but not in the numerator. Let's look at what is going on as x approaches negative 4 from the left-hand side, right? so from the negative side. So we're going to have values a little bit smaller than negative 4. If you have a value a little bit smaller than negative 4, so like negative 3.99, nope, that's not smaller than negative 4, negative 4.01. If I have negative 4.01 plus 4, then that's going to give me negative 0 0.01. So we have 2 divided by a really small negative number. And so dividing by a really small number is going to make it blow up, but it's going to blow up in a negative direction. So this piece is going to head towards negative infinity. This piece will just head towards a number. If you have just some number plus negative infinity, that limit is going to be negative infinity. Great. That is problem two. Let's look at problem three. Here in this third problem, we have x plus three over x squared plus x minus six. Uh, do we have any vertical asymptotes? Right. So those vertical asymptotes, those would occur when we get uh, at any x value that when we plug it in, we would get zero in the denominator, but something that's not zero in the numerator. It's not immediately obvious to me how, uh, what that is, uh, 
uh, what values might do that, value or values. Let's factor that denominator. So it's going to factor into x plus 3 times x minus 2. So if I plug in negative 3, oh, it will give me 0 in the numerator. So negative 3 is not uh, necessarily a vertical asymptote. But 2 is a vertical asymptote. x equals 2, that is a vertical asymptote. Is 3, is that negative 3, is that a vertical asymptote? And the answer is, no, it turns out it's not. Right? We can do that cancellation. We can cancel out those negative 3s. So we have 1 over x minus 2. We can cancel that out in the limit. Uh, and when we do direct substitution, we are going to get 1 over negative 5, or negative 1 fifth. That is our limit. Uh, this function, there's going to be a hole at x equals 3. Uh, negative 3, sorry. x equals negative 3. There is a hole there. Great. So that's, that's what we're looking at there. Let's look at two more examples involving trig functions, but we'll wait. Uh, we'll look at these in our next video.